Welcome to Curious Coaching, the Sport Northern Ireland podcast for coaches who are driven to explore new ways, thirsty for new ideas, and passionately curious about how they can maximise the power of sport through great coaching. The podcast that seeks not to answer coaching questions, but to provoke them. Hello and welcome to the most recent episode of the Curious Coaching podcast. Your host today, as always, is myself, Michael Cook, and Simon Toole. Today, we have Johnny McMurray as our guest. Johnny's very welcome. He is uh, originally from Bangor, having moved to Brisbane and Australia over 16 years ago. Uh, He he couldn't remember how many years ago it was when we were talking earlier on, Um, but 16 years he's been there. Johnny, it's fantastic to have you on. We're really looking forward to hearing your story and hearing some of the coaching and the research that you've been involved in recently. Thanks very much for having me. Great to have you. Um, so, Johnny, we, we just want to kick things off. Tell, tell us a little bit about your, your current role, what you're currently doing over there in Australia at the minute, um, what your focus is in relation to, to coaching. Yeah, right out. Um, as I said, based in Brisbane at the moment. Uh, so I've been based here for say, the past sort of 15 odd years or whatever. Um, currently, I'm just finishing off my research with, um, in conjunction with Rugby Australia, was the ARU and the University of Queensland. Uh, so what I wanted to look at um, predominantly is uh, the age grade, uh, the cult age grade that we uh, talk about in Australia, um, the under 20 age grade. So that sort of transition player uh, when they exit uh, school rugby and heading into adult rugby. So I was fortunate enough that, um, as I said, Rugby Australia was interested in the, the type of research or, or the, the subject of research that I was looking into, which was essentially I wanted to ask the players, um, I was fortunate enough to ask all the super franchise teams, um, all the under 20 players involved in it, essentially why they're involved in rugby, why they play sport, uh, and what they're typically trying to achieve away from sport. So my, my, my main driver and main aim for this was to try and paint a, a clear picture essentially for coaches um, you know I mean why these um, elite players to call them that are involved in uh, rugby union sport that I love um, and you know why what what's, what ways we could engage them and, and what they're interested in away from the field so so again because we've, we've seen and I'm sure it's the same in Northern Ireland uh, we've seen that that period or that that age of athlete a lot of fellas dropping out of rugby um, it's just not meeting the markers and meet, meeting them what their expectations were from being involved in the sport. And again, just trying to get that deeper connection, that deeper sort of coach-athlete relationship, um, understanding what they're interested in and, and, and why both they're involved in the sport and what they're trying to achieve away from the sport. So again, it was just, yeah, just trying to paint that sort of picture. Um, it, it really sort of led me. I was involved, fortunate enough to be involved in um, what was the Junior Reds or, or Rugby Australia sort of academy programs or, or age grade programs uh, for about 10 years. Um, say coaching mostly around Ballymore and around uh, Brisbane and Queensland, but uh, these were these national programs. And, and, and my my feeling always was the coach education that was offered to coaches um, just really didn't hit the mark. Uh, right down even to I've now got um, I've now got a 17 year old son who used to play rugby but dropped out twice. Uh, and and again, it really just came down to that sort of overzealous coaching to call it that. Um, or it's just the easiest way was you know the coaches just weren't hitting the mark for what he and his friends were trying to get from the sport. And, and the big thing for me was it was just, it was narrow in the pool. You know I mean? That, that sort of talent pool of players that we could get for the likes of the Wallabies, for the likes of the Reds. Um, we were almost pigeonholing them too early and or just not giving them that type of information or feedback they were looking from being involved in these programs. So, so yeah, look, that, that's, you know I mean? What I'm involved in at the moment. I'm, I'm fortunate enough I'm, I'm finishing it off, hopefully in the next couple of months. And, I'm rolling on to, I've already spoken to people within UQ and uh, within certain circles of uh, rolling on to a PhD and a very similar subject, looking at these, as you say, uh, late adolescent, early adult uh, athletes and, and, and trying to work out how, what we can do or, or how we can keep them engaged in you know, any team sports or individual sports for longer. Brilliant. Th- thank you very much, Johnny, for, for sharing that. Um, and I do want to come back to both the practical application of, of your coaching and the research element uh, a little bit later on in the conversation. But before we get there, I'm really interested to know about um, 
your your actual journey that you, you sounds like it's a bit of, it's been a bit of a metaphorical journey in terms of the research and the things that you've seen um in terms of your own experiences with your with your son dropping out i'd like to speak about your actual journey so uh, you know how did you end up out there you know 16 years ago and and, and what what was your initial experience of sport in a different country and, and, and halfway around the world well like yeah i started off so um as, as you can tell you know i mean Played rugby in Bangor when you know, I played rugby for Bangor Grammar School. It was you know my first passion really going throughout school. Uh, fortunate enough to go over to uh, Uric uh, or Cardiff Met, I think it's called now. So again, another big strong sporting university in the UK. Um, as I say, it, it really gave me my first glimpse into the call of high performance sport. Um, obviously, you know I mean a lot of strong programs, uh, both you know I mean sports psych and and. Uh, sports coaching programs, even in you know what was UX then, so it really gave me a sort of snapshot then of uh, that high performance element of it. And uh, so once I finished my degree, um, I actually went to New Zealand, lived in New Zealand for eighteen months, played uh, rugby over there, uh, did the backpacking thing all at the same time. But was when I returned to Northern Ireland, um, was fortunate enough to get a grad, uh, get a job through a graduate scheme. Um, so my day-to-day job, I'm actually involved in the, the mining industry, like a crushing and screening game. So I uh, got a job through one of the big companies based on County Tyrone um, and came out, as I say, 16 years ago and been doing the same job ever since. So uh, they're extremely supportive. As I say, over the time I've been doing, like I described before, a lot of club coaching, rep coaching, So it, which I sort of dabbled in early on. I, I even when I moved up to Brisbane to be with my now wife, I was like, oh, maybe you should start playing again. But she was actually the one who sort of dug the elbow and said, sort of catch yourself on. Uh, signed up for coaching. So as opposed to a couple of training sessions in the game at a weekend, it quickly actually turned into I was coaching six, you know, I mean, six nights a week. Um, so that sort of backfired on her horribly. But but yeah, like I've been extremely fortunate. As you said, uh, I came out with the job, uh, even the job I'm still with um, from, you know, I mean, the Northern Ireland company over to here. Uh, extremely supportive uh, of, you know, say my, my coaching, my uni work, uh, done a grad dip into the research I'm in now and hopefully into a PhD, which I fully support and understand. Um, but yeah, as I say, it's been a, uh, a long, a long winded year, as I say, from, from Ireland to, you know, Wales to uh, New Zealand and on to Melbourne and up to finally up to Brisbane. But yeah, that, that, that love for sports coaching and rugby in particular has uh, stayed strong throughout. So. Thanks, Johnny. It's, um, it's fascinating, fascinating the uh, physical journey uh, through there. So, Johnny, one of the things that we always ask about on this podcast, ask every single person that ever comes on, uh, due to the name of the podcast, um, we always ask about curiosity. And um, we hear a lot, and as Michael says, we will hear a little bit more about your research and things as, as we go through this morning. But we're always interested to know what people are interested in themselves looking forward. Um, so what has got you curious at the minute, either within your own coaching um, or within your research or maybe both? Um, well, yeah, look, within it sort of ties in, as I said, I, I, what, what really makes me curious is the prescriptive nature that coaches try and lean towards. Um, we find safety and security in a very um, regimented or prescriptive style. When we see, you know, and you hear about how, you know, whatever sport it might be of how, you know, I mean, the great coaches get this level of impact, level of, um, you know, I mean, this strong bond, strong relationship, but we, we seem to want to invest time into uh, the, it, this investment of more information around X's and O's, technical, tactical stuff, when I just think there's this massive gap and massive opportunity, especially at the moment with the transition and the change in personality development especially over the past few years even excluding what's happened in the past say 12 14 months um it did it, it just for me there seems to be a great opportunity and i read a lot about the likes of personality development life stories and there's there is a fair bit of research out there looking at um it, that that sort of uh, research within certainly within a sporting context as well um i just don't think we invest enough time um and i want to look more into it you know to come back to your, your main question I'm, I'm curious as to how we can look further into it you know how we can find um like there's research and there's a lot of people out there the likes of mark sullivan james sullivan who talk about you know this form of life uh, understanding both the you know i mean the cultural impact within the group but also outside the group and what that can buy in as well 
and, and how that can have a greater impact in, you know, I mean, how you communicate the, the effectiveness of your communication as well. Um, just to try and you know, get this this learning yeah, you know, that we're looking for, especially with age grade players, but even you know, I mean, senior you know, high professional players as well. Um, so yeah, that that's probably the main thing for me at the moment is is that investment, almost that alignment of uh, investment or alignment of time that we put into how to coach as opposed to what we're coaching. So that that's pricked me for quite some time to be honest with you and and, and that's why I want to continue the research that I'm talking about as well. So. Oh, uh, really interesting stuff. I think we've as you're you're right to say there's lots of people thinking about that um at the minute as well which is uh which is great. I think um Johnny if if you were to I suppose if you you were um trying to take a step in that direction and trying to invest a little bit more time within that uh, in your coaching what do you think would be the first steps for a coach to to start to do that? Um, the big thing, uh, and I've been doing some work with coaches to say seasons are starting to kick off here. So I've done some work with a couple of soccer coaches, a couple of rugby coaches as well. Um, it's, uh, we'll put it in the simplest terms, it's trying to find their why. You know what I mean? So again, it's coming back to what, um, my research is predominantly about, but, um, it's trying to find out their why. Why are they there? Um, one of the best questions I feel, um, quest, uh, one of the best questions I feel coaches can ask, uh, for players, uh, if they're trying to find more about them is, uh, what are you giving up to be here? So it gives you a real sort of glimpse into, um, you know, I mean, what 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 other things are attracted to, what other um, sports or, or or other interests, you know, I mean, are they potentially giving up to be here? Um, and, and it also gives you a, a better idea of their social, you know, I mean, social cultural background as well of what else is going on. Um, it's just trying to find out, you know, who they are, what they're interested in. Um, and again, you know, it's just right down to communication styles as well. So, um, so yeah, that the, the, the best, you know, in the rawest possible form, like I've said to coaches recently is, you know, I mean, trying to find out their why, trying to find out their, why they're involved in this sport and say, we're, we're in 2021, there's 101 ways, you know, I mean, teenage boys or girls could distract themselves, uh, in, in the most respectful ways. But, uh, if they're coming to organize sport, um, yeah, you, you've got to make it engaging or, or there's a reason why they've signed up and made this commitment as much as you have as a coach. Um, so it's trying to find out, you know, I mean, what attracted them to the sport, what, you know, I mean, uh, they're trying to get from it. Um, and if you tick off those questions, then yeah, that's when we'll, we'll hopefully keep, we'll have a higher retention rate of, um, age grade athletes or, or these, uh, young adults remaining in sport, um, which again ultimately can benefit both your your high performance end and your just your um, your social aspect end as well. So yeah, brilliant. Thanks, Johnny. I think there's there's loads for people to unpick within that um, and consider within their own coaching if they're if they're listening into this. So um, thanks thanks for that, Johnny. In in terms of your own learning, has there been an opportunity that you've had across that coaching journey that um, you felt well actually that's been the most valuable learning I've got for myself probably the big thing um, I've got is and again being involved in um, a university program was that real sort of the community of uh, community of practice sort of element of it so um, we we do uh, within the university you've got a couple of good advisors who who organize um, all the research students and, and some coaches from outside the sort of made up uh, recently it's been via zoom but you know i mean try and meet up in person as well and just share and bounce ideas off so again being involved in you know i mean rugby programs for years it was very much it was a vault you know what i mean everyone treated and i'm sure you fellas see it you know i mean within sports as well of certainly if you go back you know i mean two three years ago everyone would keep them at arm's length you know i mean it, everyone thought they had the magic ingredient the special formula whatever it might have been but the, the best thing that I find, especially, you know, I mean, in recent times, being within research and, and having access to people in other sports or um, even esports recently, trying to get snippets of ideas for, you know, I mean, how to coach, how to engage uh, with, you know, I mean, a range of different athlete, athletes, you know, of all ages, uh, has probably been the most beneficial of it. Um, I even last time I was in Ireland, it must be about four or five years ago, I was talking to Matt, Matty Wilkie, who looks after the IRFU. Uh, he's the head of education down there. And again, that was a big thing that he had taken and he had started, you know, you, you would find these fellas, especially in Ireland, who couldn't or wouldn't travel too far around, but you had pockets of, you know, I mean, clubs which were within, you know, five, 10 miles of each other. So he would grab coaches from all different sports. And again, realistically, coaching is a craft at the end of the day. Yeah, all the, 
all the skills and drills and things like that you'll find around it. It's just noise, you know what I mean? Um, it, it's actually hard to connect and engage with, you know, players of whatever age it might be and, uh, you know, using different ideas, tactics, techniques to, you're going to have this, you know, I mean, variety of personalities there. So, so the big thing for me, yeah, is just, just that idea of being able to share and being able to grab, being able just to ask meaningful questions of, you know, I mean, other coaches or players to make sure that, you know, I mean, you're, you're essentially sharpening your sword for that coaching craft. So, yeah, that this would be probably the main things for me. Oh, super. I know um, we often, we have a presentation around some, um, some ways of learning at the minute. And one of the slides with them talks about uh, collaboration as a, as a new competition, uh, which I think we're seeing in lots of the tech companies and, and places like that. So um, it's great to hear that that's sort of shifting on within the coaching circles that you're moving in. And I think um, here as well, and we've got much more people between sports, um, certainly, and maybe even within sports, um, doing a bit of sharing. So, um, so that's great, Johnny. If is there any oppor- um, opportunity that you've had in the past where actually things haven't gone as well for you, and you've taken a lot of learning from that? Plenty, plenty. Um, look, Ed, if you're in, uh, you know, in organised sport and in, you know, I mean, high performance competitions, there's obviously, um, you know, I mean, a lot of uh, emphasis on winning and a lot of focus on, you know, I mean, the competition success, which realistically isn't the um, uh, the main driver for these high performance programs or the rugby programs, the age grade programs that we're, I've been involved in. Um, so yeah, look. Sadly, I've had dealt with um, some angry parents, as an example, or uh, you know, I mean, other coaches who who you know, I mean, have been sort of misguided or, or or certainly not on the same wavelength that I'm talking about. So yeah, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's again, you're dealing with people. You know what I mean? That's that's the big thing about it. And and um, as long as you can sort of say stay true to yourself and hang your hat on, I guess that's that's the big thing that I've always taken from it. So. I'll deal with some, you know, I mean, angry third parties, as I be it parents, other coaches, whatever it might be, supporters, whoever it is. But the big thing I've always, you know, as long as you stay true to yourself and and why you do things, and and again, if you can explain in an articulate way, which I've had too many a time to certain parents or or certain other coaches, as an example of why we're doing things a certain way, why I believe it's important, um, then that'll always ring true. Um, I guess then, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter if I'm coaching the bloke now or seven years ago, if my standards and norms and expectations from the group, you know what I mean, or, or what I'm trying to achieve um, with a group of, you know I mean, 11 year olds, 17 year olds, whatever it might be, as long as that's fairly consistent, um, then you know, I, I can feel comfortable in my in my coaching and what I'm offering these players. So so that's probably, yeah, being the biggest thing is, is sadly, yeah, as a coach, you, you have to get a bit galvanized and you have to get a bit, thick skinned um but yeah it's it's having that patience and having that understanding and, uh, and 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 staying true to yourself has probably been the best thing to take away from some of those difficult uh difficult uh, circumstances in the past thanks johnny i know we both really always appreciate it when people open up because i think there's so much learning for other people and um, with it within that what, what would you say in terms of how you've gone about that what would you say the biggest difference now between you coaching you know, 10 years ago and coaching now. And, and, you know, you've obviously learned over time how to engage those people. So how do you go about that in a different way? The best thing I've done, uh, like 10 years ago, again, I'm sure everyone's the same, they're sort of sitting looking and laugh at, you know, I mean, what you used to do 10 years ago. But um, and it, it was exactly, I probably was one of those overzealous coaches or um, or certainly more prescriptive coaches, probably not uh, yelling and expectations wise, but I was certainly very prescriptive. To, you know, I mean, the first age grade I ever coached was uh, 16, 17 year old um, fellas and a sort of um, smaller club across Brisbane. Um, but um, I, I prescribed them. I probably gave them what they needed at the time, but I look at it and again, it was just, it wasn't, um, again, I had a couple of fellas who were in and out of the team and whatever. And, and again, maybe drifted away because I wasn't fully um, attuned to what they were looking for as being part of the team. So probably the best thing I do now um, compared to, or one of the better things I do now compared to in the past is I ask a lot more questions, um, a lot more meaningful questions as well, a lot more um, uh, sort of uh, lead on questions. I mean, trying to, I'll ask, you know, maybe quite a flipping question to try and get a little strand of uh, a thread of what's going on with them or what they're interested in or what they're trying to get from, from you know, the session, the season, whatever it might be. And then just have a pull at that thread as well and just see actually where it goes. So 
again, I was not 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 autocratic to call it that, but very, you know, this is the way we should do it because, you know, this is the game and this is how it should look. But the big thing I tell coaches is, especially in age grade coaching, is, you know, I mean, if you're coaching 15, 16 year old fellas, they've played against the team that you're trying to prepare them for probably five, six years in a row before now already. So if you ask and get a bit more information about, you know, I mean, what they think, what they, you know, I mean, how, how possibly we could win the game or, or, or what we should, you know, I mean, change or adjust to try and give us a bit of a competitive edge. They'll probably know, and any changes you want to add or, or want to amend to it, you'll get greater buy-in if it's come from one of the players. So, yeah, just a big thing for me, and I, I've written a lot about it and talked a lot about it as well with, you know, I mean, some local coaches is just trying to ask meaningful questions. Um, don't, you know, I mean, don't talk. Uh, the NRL coaches here have a big thing. Uh, step back before you step in. Um, so step back, just just let it let them see. You know, I mean, hopefully the fellows will talk about it themselves. Maybe they'll, you know, I mean, correct their standards or or, or or make adjustments by themselves. Again, if you can give them more um, input or more um, say in what they're doing or how they're doing it, and um, they'll have greater buy-in. You know, I mean, greater sense of autonomy. Um, yeah, and just you'll you'll get. You'll get a better product at the end to call it that. So. Brilliant, Johnny. I think I'll be I'll be pinching the step back to step in uh, line. Definitely, uh, definitely. Hopefully, doing some of that already. But I, I do like that line for summarizing that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Johnny. There, I really like the phrase you use there uh, in terms of pulling the thread. So uh, you know, uh, it's, we we call obviously the podcast "Curious Coach Podcast." I think you just pull that thread. You make people curious to find out a, a little bit more without actually doing it for them. So I'd like to pull a thread with you. Um, Go for it. You mentioned, uh, which I thought was lovely as well, in terms of start with why and asking coaches what their what their why is, um, and and look at how that has changed from years ago. Whenever season planning was about you know everything down on the on the on the page and it was about how many exercises you do in a certain amount of time and the next exercise would be, I'd like to ask you about your why. Because um, you seem very, very passionate and essentially very passionate about sport from a number of different levels, from a research perspective, from a practical perspective. What, what's your way? What, what drives you in that sense? Um, my why is, uh, as you can tell, like, I'm, I'm extremely passionate about rugby union. Love the sport. Um, have done for many years and whatever. And I guess I've seen, uh, in my opinion, it's not, not lost its way, but certainly it's, it's strength or, you know, I mean, very certainly sort of um, engagement and involvement is waning in Australia. Um, yeah, so I, think it, I think it's because of that sort of style of coaching that we're just not, in, you know, I mean, we're not offering an engaging product or or something that fellas really want to, you know, I mean, partake in and buy in. Um, my why is, look, I've really, I just, especially this transition period, I've always enjoyed, so I've coached from, under sixes to seniors, um, but I always particularly enjoyed that sort of cold age grade, that 18 to 20 year old. Um, but it's, it's always been a big thing for me of seeing, you know, I mean, good players, good people drop out, you know, I mean, of, the, of the sport. And again, it's it, for a plethora of different reasons. It's not just, you know, I mean, solely different reasons, but it always comes back to, you know, I mean, some of them are disgruntled about playing time. Some of them just can't make it work because, um, for whatever reason, you know, I mean, again, I used to coach at, you know, I mean, the University of Queensland and uh, their, their rugby side did have everyone from, you know, I mean, mostly uni students, but you have fellas doing apprenticeships, working, some of them, you know, I mean, redoing some schools, you know, I mean, studies. So again, they're, they're just trying to make it work. And, and, and for me, not understanding what they were going through, it was Johnny Wilkinson, I think it was, and he probably still lost somebody else, not knowing what bus stop they got on it. And then you, know, you can't really offer them you know, what, what they're going to do, you know, I mean, I was talking to a teacher about it the other day and it's, it's being aware of what the student in the classroom is for, you know, I mean, it might just be if they can sit in their chair for one, you know, I mean, for the whole day, that's a win, you know, I mean, that's a win for the student, that's a win for the teacher. It's, it's, it's understanding those elements of it. So, so my why is to really try and paint a picture or give coaches some tools, like I said about the questioning before, of, of you know, I mean, trying to get to know these athletes just a little bit better um knowing why they're you know i mean why they step over the paint why they want to play the sport they're involved in but what they're also doing and what they're also trying to you know i mean achieve away from the pitch if you can paint that bit of a better picture and you can have you know again and i'm sure it's a big thing in in, in northern ireland as well it's a big thing in australia you know i mean the, the this com your conversation with them could be the highlight of their day 
So again, it's, it's been, you know, offering that meaningful contact, that meaningful connection, um, especially in this, you know, I mean, very difficult, you know, I mean, age of athlete to call it that is, you know, I mean, they're a melting pot of hormones with everything else that's going on as well. So it's just trying to engage and, and understand them of why they're involved in the sport. So, so yeah, that, that, that's my main driver. That's why I'm doing the research and doing that's why I'm going to do the research I want to do of, of focusing on this, this, you know, I mean, transition athlete, this early adult so that it, it gives them something to become not just a better, you know, a better player, but a better person as well. So. Thank, thank you very much for, for sharing that. I, I kind of sprung that on you, but um, I, I totally see where you're coming from and it, make, it makes sense. And, and having those conversations with coaches, you know, allows them to identify what the why is um, and, and make sense of it at the, at the same time or, or over time. You mentioned just at the end there in terms of your research, let, let, let's move back into that now. Um, you give us the overview. Is there any findings that have emerged so far from, from the research that you've conducted up to this point? I know we had a conversation earlier. You're you're at the, the end game of it now, you're writing everything up and, and, and so on. But is there anything that has, has emerged out of there? Yeah, sadly, sadly, as you said, I'm at the boring stage where it's just the, the editing and making sure everything's uh, in the right spot and essentially framing that picture like I coined it before. But look, the big thing from my research was, um, yeah, they're, they're, these fellas, so again, I was, I was fortunate enough to ask, you know, it was about 150, 160 players. Um, it was all done by, you know, I mean, a digital survey. So I got two different stages. I got them when they're in the, the high performance, the Super 20 competition, and then later on in the year when they returned back to club. Um, but the findings were fairly consistent right through. So, so, and again, it was initially disappointing, or not initially disappointing, but initially surprising. So I asked these fellas of, um, you know, what they're typically trying to achieve in their sport and away from sport. Within their sport, again, it was a very individualized focus. Um, it was consistent right through. There was no talk of winning competitions, winning flags. Again, it was these intrinsic sort of measures and motivations that they were trying to achieve. So it's essentially they would come to rugby and be very internally focused about what they find important and what they were trying to achieve. Um, and then away from sport, it was this almost, you know, I mean, release and they all had different sort of uh, friendships and expectations away from the field, which, again, was very, very different. So so initially as a rugby coach and even speaking to some of the coaches, they were all almost disappointed that this, you know, I mean, they didn't have this collective goal um but it, it was actually refreshing to see so um a researcher based in i think it's canada or america amanda vizek and uh, so she looked at the um she tried to measure what fun was or uh, in organized sport for for age grade athletes she looked at nine to 19 and her findings were fairly consistent with mine where it was this it was this high effort it was trying hard um positive coaching um again it was a very much internalized focus so i was able to sort of you know i mean uh, retract or detract from that and and sort of massage it against my results if that makes sense and and find that there was some consistency so essentially the fellas with these you know i mean high internal focus which takes a high volume of effort and um, that is them expressing themselves that's them having fun um and again look it, it, while it might have i would have loved to have done some follow-up questions and just seeing you know get almost a pull on that thread like we were talking about before and just find out a bit more questions around it but but essentially the fellas would step into rugby union and, and exert this high effort have these goals and internal goals that they find themselves as um extremely important um tick those boxes and then all the other stuff was uh, you know away from rugby so so again it, it's it's trying to paint that picture for and I've presented it to rugby Australia and, and other sports of, you know, I mean, these, this age group of athletes step into, like, like we talk about, this age group of athletes steps onto the pitch, over the paint to push, test, express themselves. Um, and then they step away for, you know, I mean, for something else. So gone are the days of, um, you know, this is the be all and end all the, you know, I mean, this results focus and, you know, I mean, they're, yeah, some fellows will be have their hearts hearts made and hearts broken on a on a Saturday afternoon. They're stepping there just you know I mean to, to to try and be part of something. They were looking for this collective effort, but even an individualized focus and goal and and yeah and just and just trying to meet those markers. So so yeah, it was interesting. Initially disappointing, or as a as a, as you know I mean be involved in this co uh, uh, this organized sport sort of uh, you know cohort, but. Yeah, we're finding these these other findings and finding that yeah, you know, I mean, what actually they're displaying is them having fun in inverted commas uh, was extremely sort of refreshing and pleasing to to get that from the data sets gathered. So. Fantastic, and 
and you're right that you know that that be all and end all aspect we, we, we probably are seeing less and less of that out there at the minute and that's a culture mm-hmm. change and you know if we want to keep people involved in sport and keep them enjoying it as you say the fun aspect then actually we might have to do a bit of change our, ourselves or at least consider ways we can start to have the best of both words for for those involved um on on the research aspect you you've told us you've been working with two fantastic um colleagues in, in terms of cliff mallet and, and stephen rain How, how's it been working with those guys who, who will be considered you know top of the field in terms of sport and research look really good and that's yeah really sort of blessed to have two good advisors two very different advisors as well stephen's extremely um organized regimented again one of the best things and to come back and it's made me reflect on my stuff he asked extremely hard questions um you know what i mean he'll grab a couple of bits from you know i mean pieces of writing or whatever it might be and ask him really hard really um to call them almost confronting you know what I mean? he'll he really challenge you on it which is good you know what i mean that's that's kind of what you need is that that pushing as i say to sharpen your sword um cliff as i say you know i mean quite notorious obviously within the the, the industry i mean having coached at the olympics and whatever and now been involved in you know the IWC for years and whatever. Um, he sort of nudged me along the idea of this personality development. You know, I mean, he has a strong background in uh, like self self determination theory and a lot of readings around that, and whatever. So he he's extremely useful and throws a few tidbits out there. And and yeah, you know, it 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 was really good to have. You know, I mean, there's a couple of things around that. Really good to have two different sort of you know, I mean, two different colors. You know, I mean, give offering you feedback as well. Um, that wasn't, you know, they're both sort of pushing me on the same tracks, but pushing me in different ways. Um, so really fortunate to have that. And again, just coming back to the that sort of collective or or um, the, the sort of avenues of opportunity they offer as well. So they know, you know, I mean, both of coaches and researchers across Australia and across the world. Um, and again, that that even say, I will, you know, email this book or speak to this book or find bits of writing that, you know, I mean, are are useful and and or of interest as well. So, you know, I mean, really super useful and super interesting to have blokes like that who, again, are, are are willing to, you know, sort of push and nudge you when you need it, but also, you know, I mean, offer that supportive and, and curious hand, you know, I mean, so the, the, yeah, notorious for sending me stuff as I say, I love to read, love to read the research and whatever, and, that, you know, I mean, they'll flick me bits every here and now and again, and, and, and also very good at telling me to stop reading and keep writing. So. <laughs> Fantastic. And I think Simon, to close off our discussion, has one final question for you. Yeah, Johnny, we we are always conscious when we do these um, podcasts that we write down a list of questions that we're keen to ask whoever whoever comes on to talk to us. Uh, but um, sometimes it, it won't always cover actually what the information that they wanted to get across. So we just wanted to create one sort of final opportunity. If if there was a question we could have asked you that you could provide some information for for coaches that might be useful. What would it have been and what would the answer be more importantly? Um, what's the easiest way to get a four five seven to move to Australia? Um, um I'm not sure actually, to be honest with you. Look, like, um gosh. Um yeah, I'm not sure. Like well, I was gonna say what's the toughest question you've been asked? But again, that's uh, I was doing, you know, I mean some work as I say, I, I compiled um um a uh, a blog post there the other day and I was asking coaches and and people both in the UK and Australia, of what's you know, I mean, the best questions and whatever. And I say one of the better questions was, um, you know, what you know, what have you given up to be here? Um, I guess uh, one of the questions actually Russell learned. So um, I was chatting to him the other day, and he says, um, "Who's given you good feedback recently?" Uh, was another good question. Um, good question around my research and me as well. Um, God, I don't bloody know. You put me on the spot now. Um, I'm not sure. Um, or, or yeah, I guess as somebody as, as well was talking to me about, you know, I mean, what's the one thing that you would change about rugby union um, the other day? I said, that took me a while, but I eventually landed on, I, I'd have a global calendar, especially now as well, so that, you know, people could turn into, you know, different periods and types of the season and we wouldn't have this battle about, you know, I mean, the Lions or the World Cup or where, where all stuff's going to be played and whatever. It, it should be nicely neat and easy to, to slot through. But, um, yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, what's the best question, or or maybe what's the best book or resource? I don't know. You put me on the spot there, Simon. You 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 completely gizzed me to be honest with you. So, anyway. <laughs> you you'll, you'll have to come back to us on Twitter when we when we get this out. Um, but Johnny, it's it's been a really fascinating conversation. Um, 
uh, I know Michael and, and myself as well both really appreciate your time appreciate it. it's pretty pretty late at night and um, when we're speaking uh, speaking to you here as well and I uh, just want to thank you for um, thank you for your time and as I say it's been a really enjoyable conversation and uh, hopefully we'll be able to continue as we, as we uh, as we go on the next few years yeah, yeah mate, as I, like I said these two fellas before you know I mean really grateful for seeing sport you know I mean in Northern Ireland and this type of uh, forum being shared around there so I think yeah as, as we were talking about extremely useful and um, hopefully it brings you know, I mean coaches and different ideas together so you know I mean thank you to you two fellas for for getting this up off the ground so Johnny thank thanks a million take care now no worries cheers man Simon another great interview with Johnny there um, really knowledgeable guy you know is is doing some great stuff both in a research and, and practical point of view what were your takeaways from from the conversation this morning yeah michael as you say it was a really enjoyable conversation to be to be a part of um i think johnny gave us a lot of detail around uh, his coaching practice is um his research and and he really um uh, i think was very candid as well in terms of the lessons he's learned as he's gone through his coaching things. But I think out of everything uh, for me, the, the phrase he used about attuning to what your players or your participants are looking for. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's something we could take forward and uh, probably under our own coaching, but uh, maybe for others as well around, well, actually, you know, why are the people that we are um, coaching there um, and how can we shape our coaching around them? Absolutely. For, for me, you offered a lot from both a practical and a, and a, and a research um, base, which, which I mentioned. And I really liked some of the questions that were coming out of that in relation to the questions he was posing to coaches. Um, so he mentioned there, you know, what's your way and sitting down with the start of the season with, with a coach and, and talking about that. Um, or, you know, who's giving you really good feedback at the minute. Um, and, and those for me are, are really pertinent questions that, you know, when we ask those to coaches, it really makes them think. And, and it shows how much we've moved away from, you know, planning in terms of just planning a session or, or, or planning a season to a more conceptualized view of coaching. And I think that that really improves coaching. It really improves the experience that, you know, our, our, our young athletes or our young participants can get. Um, and the more conversations we have about that, the better it's going to be for our coach educators, for our coaches, and the people who are actually playing the sport. No, absolutely. As as say, uh, it was a really fascinating conversation, uh, and one one that I very much enjoyed being part of. So, uh, Michael, thanks thanks for co-hosting today. Um, uh, thanks again on behalf of both of us uh, to Johnny um, for for his contribution to the to the um, the episode, uh, which was which was really really fascinating. Um, and thanks to everybody who's listened in. Uh, we're looking forward to bring you another episode in around uh, a month's time. Uh, thanks very much and we'll see you soon. Curious Coaching is brought to you by Sport Northern Ireland. We hope that this episode has sparked some curiosity for you and your coaching. The future belongs to the curious.